Hey guys, I'm Kenny and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be watching some porn. Uh, not that type of porn, supercar porn. In the shape of this Lamborghini Gallardo and a Lamborghini Huracan. So as we know now, Lamborghini, one of the most iconic supercar brands, have essentially been run by Audi, a car manufacturer better known for their everyday saloon cars. And being German, they've got a slightly different outlook on cars to the fiery builders from Bologna. So let's start with the Gallardo then. That was Audi's first idea with Lamborghini. Build a smaller V10 car and go for more sales. Let's not forget, Lamborghini didn't exactly have impressive sales figures before Audi took over and now, to date, the Gallardo is Lamborghini's most successful model. Well done Audi! And there's no denying that pre-Audi, some of Lamborghini's build quality was a little bit questionable. If you look at some of the older Lamborghinis, you'd think that the coach builders used a super glue with a 10 year guarantee to stick the things together. But that's not the case anymore. This Gallardo feels like it's been put together using spare parts from a German tank. And just check that interior out. So it doesn't take a car enthusiast to see, but from an engineering point of view, Audi have undoubtedly made Lamborghini better cars. So let's take a closer look at the Gallardo then. As you've probably worked out, this is the LP570 Superleggera. A bit like the SV models that we've seen with the Diablo, the Murcielago and the Aventador. So it's a special edition car. It's lighter, it's got more power and it's um, a little bit more expensive too. But it's the perfect model to be putting up against Lamborghini's next creation, the Hurricane. So we all know then it's an Audi designed 5.2 V10 producing 562 horsepower and it sounds absolutely incredible. The Gallardo never did see the dual clutch system that we see in almost every performance car nowadays, so it uses an automated manual single clutch setup. The Gallardo has always been a fantastic handling car, and the Superleggera is even better thanks to its lightweight. Weight saving comes from using lots of carbon fibre and not only is it strong and lightweight but it's also a rather sexy looking material. Standard alloys have been stripped from the car and Lamborghini's added four uh, forced aluminium alloys. They've also stripped out the leather interior and it's been replaced by the Alcantara suede which is absolutely sexy, a little bit Rod Stewart you could say. They've even went to the bother of using thinner glass, you've got a thinner windshield, thinner engine bay cover and passenger windows. They've managed to make a weight saving of 80 kilograms and if you match that to a 10 horsepower power hike then you end up with a much faster and sharper Gallardo. <laughs> Design wise the LP570 is stunning, take 5 minutes to look round the car and you'll notice design cues coming from Lamborghinis of old. Lamborghini design has always been about straight lines and more angles, the Countach is the perfect example of that, so it's pleasing for me to look at the Gallardo and see the Countach popping out from various different angles. But there's much more to a car looking good and going fast and that's how a car makes you feel when you drive it. A car's got to have soul and a car's got to have character and that's something you could argue is missing from something like the Nissan GTR or even McLaren for that matter. Now those two examples are eye-wateringly fast but the problem is they've been almost engineered to perfection. So let me give you an example then. A manual transmission is far more involving than say a paddle shift. It makes you feel as a driver that you're actually part of the mechanics of the car. But then you add in the paddle shift and then you take that element of driving away. Add in a dual clutch and the gear change becomes so smooth that you don't even realise that you've changed gear. And on top of that, add electronics that's so advanced even NASA would be happy, then you might as well be holding a PlayStation 3 controller in your hand. The Gallardo is by no means a perfect car. It's a little bit rough around the edges and each time you change gear you'll think you've just hit a deer. And even down to the design, I don't think Audi had banned Lamborghini from using a pencil and a ruler to design the car. But that's where the Lamborghini spirit still shines through. 
Lamborghini weren't meant to be perfect. Lamborghini were supposed to be bedroom picture porn, which it is. Lamborghinis were supposed to be loud, which it is. And every time you drive a Lamborghini, you'd think, blink in here and I might die. And you do. So overall, for me, Audi are almost the silent partner in the Gallardo, and it still feels like it represents everything Lamborghini should. Personally, I love the Gallardo. It's relatively basic in design when it comes to the nuts and bolts, but for me, that's what a Lamborghini should be. One slight disappointment with the Gallardo was that we didn't see the scissor doors. Apart from that, it's one hell of a supercar. Everything about it, the way it feels, the way it drives, and most importantly, the way it makes you feel as a driver. 100% supercar. So after the success of the Gallardo, there was no doubt that we were going to see the next reincarnation of the Lamborghini V10. Enter the Hurricane. <laughs> So has the Hurricane been a step in the right direction for Lamborghini or have we now just got an RS6 with a pointy front? Well, first of all, let's start with the key. It's exactly the same as the RS6. It's not a very good start. So even when we jump inside the Hurricane, it feels like Lamborghini should do. It's kind of been aimed at like a, a jet fighter, even down to having this little uh, flippy up thing over the, the ignition where you flip it up and start the button. Driving position, certainly Lamborghini. Uh, one of my favourite things is the, the mirrors out on the pods. When you're looking in them, you just see these things sticking out at the side of the car. Uh, and then when you glance into the mirrors, all you can see realistically is a little bit of what's behind you and then you've got these massive air intakes, which is definitely Lamborghini. Another thing is when you glance into the rear view mirror, all you can see is that V10 staring back at you. So somebody needs to tell Lamborghini that the rear view mirror is not for your engine. However, it is pretty cool. One thing I'd say I'm not a big fan of uh, in the Hurricane is all the buttons on the steering wheel, especially the indicators. On the left side of the steering wheel, you've got this little button. It's a little bit like a motorcycle thing. So when you want to go right, you push right. When you want to go left, you push left. And when you want to cancel, you push straight in, which is fine. But when you're driving slowly and you've maybe got your steering wheel at 180 degrees, you now find that these buttons are on the other side of the steering wheel. So constantly, your brain's always trying to work out what side the button is and what way to push it. So it gets a little bit frustrating. So for me personally, I would just prefer a standard stock. Design-wise, the exterior, I think uh, I think it's quite a stunning looking machine. A lot of people have referred to the Hurricane as not looking quite as aggressive, etc. as a Lamborghini should, but I don't think that's quite right. I mean, it's one of the prettiest looking cars I've seen from the front, and it definitely, definitely carries over Lamborghini design from previous models. If you look at the back of the car, it's not my favourite. It's not a bad design, but I think Lamborghini could have done a little bit better. To me, it doesn't really look like any other Lamborghinis. But it's not a bad design. Um, but yeah, I think they definitely could have done a little bit better with the rear end. Having a look at the nuts and bolts of the Hurricane, it's got a completely different chassis from the, the Gallardo. It's called uh, Alloy and Carbon Fibre Hybrid, so it's not like the McLaren where you've got this full carbon fibre tub on the go, but it, it does have a carbon fibre section. Uh, and the rest of it obviously is built from aluminium so it should mean that the chassis is nice and stiff and also light so that effectively should translate onto pretty awesome handling still shares the same 5.2 v10 as the Gallardo. this time in the hurricane is putting out 602 brake horsepower pretty crazy actually that's paired up to the dual clutch system which I must say is a really, really fast gear change. It's almost seamless. I mean, you could argue it's a little bit, you know, uninvolving, but still is producing zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds, and then it'll go on to a top speed of 202 miles an hour. So when you're pushing the Hurricane on, you can really feel that the chassis is spot on. When it starts to lose grip, the car will remain pretty well balanced all the way to the apex. I will say that the Hurricane probably understeers a little bit quick, but you'd expect that from a four-wheel drive car anyway. Uh, another thing I'm not keen on is the electric steering, especially on track, it just feels pretty vague, especially for a 200 mile an hour supercar. I think now with the level of technology and refinement that we find in the Hurricane, I think it's almost become too much of a perfect car. For some people this will be pretty good news, but for myself I'd much prefer a sort of more old school Lamborghini. 
So all in all then, there's no doubt that Lamborghini have improved on the Gallardo. Technology wise, the Hurricane is definitely the winner and the looks are certainly up to date. But if you want to drive a car that takes you back to everything that Lamborghini stands for, then the Gallardo is the car. <laughs>